This uh, statement from sources close to Gary Lineker I think is quite revealing in a number of ways. It's, uh, our understanding is that uh, they're fairly confident that the matter will be resolved and the key words are to his satisfaction within the next 24 hours. Now obviously there are a number of ways that you could interpret that but I think the smart money would potentially be on uh, his satisfaction meaning some sort of resolution perhaps even tweaks to the guidelines of the BBC that would allow him to do the two things that he wants we know he wants to do which is continue to present match of the day and other things on the BBC but also be free to say what he wants on his social media he's long considered himself a freelancer he does work for BT Sport for Walkers uh, aside from his work for the BBC he want as such he feels like he has uh, a part of his life that is not just the BBC on his Twitter account he doesn't reference the BBC and he feels like he should be able to say uh, what he likes on that so we might gather from what sources are telling Sky News that his satisfaction would presumably involve something along those lines and I think it was fairly obvious as the weekend developed and as this crisis rumbled on that a landing zone if you like was coming into view Tim Davy hinted at it yesterday he talked about reflecting on the guidelines themselves it was quite a turnaround really from 24 hours prior to that when they'd been very clear that uh, Gary Lineker had, had broken the guidelines and that he should be staying away from political issues. 24 hours later the director general of the BBC was in listening mode he was reflecting a number of former BBC wise heads uh, even today have said that the obvious solution to this is some kind of redrafting of the guidelines that might just allow a little bit more leeway to uh, freelancers to those presenters uh, at the BBC who are in areas other than news whether that's sport or nature or, or uh, popular programs like The Apprentice if you're thinking of someone like Alan Sugar so perhaps that is where the landing zone will be the only thing to say to that is well if that is the case and if Gary Lineker is back on the BBC in a matter of days well what is the reaction going to be from those parts of the country who were very angry with what he said in the first place. What will conservative backbenchers be saying in the House of Commons next week? What will be the headline on the Daily Mail and the other newspapers that were quite vociferous in their condemnation of Gary Lineker? And that is a battle that presumably, if the BBC has come to this decision, they're going to have to be prepared to fight. Because if it is the decision, and again, we have to stress that we don't know that. All we have is this language from sources close to Gary Lineker that the situation will be resolved to his satisfaction. So if we interpret his satisfaction as meaning something along those lines, well, then the BBC and Gary Lineker are going to have a heck of a fight on their hands uh, as soon as this becomes public uh, and the knowledge of the deal uh, is out in the open. Because I think it's fairly clear that there was a vociferous reaction to what he said and that's not going to have uh, dissipated overnight just because uh, the BBC and Gary Lineker have come to some sort of arrangement. So look, we await to see exactly what it is but once again worth reiterating that sources close to Gary Lineker telling Sky News tonight that they are confident that the situation will be resolved to his satisfaction within the next 24 hours and I think the best way we can interpret that at this stage with all the caveats I've just outlined is that it may be a Gary Lineker return to the BBC in some format uh, that will allow him to continue to do what he says he's always done which is uh, speak out on the issues that matter to him. Uh, Matthew in the meantime do we have any more information about uh, future programming because we've seen slim down versions of, of, of match of the day uh, match of the day two also this evening do we know what's likely to happen with future programming bearing in mind that that staff have decided to support uh, Gary Lineker thus far. Well, look, all eyes have to be on match of the day two tonight, uh, where there was every expectation that it would follow a similar format to match of the day last night, which the, it was basically devoid of all the usual trappings of match of the day as it's come to be known and loved across the country. There was no traditional iconic theme tune. There was no commentary. There was no punditry whatsoever. It, was, it wasn't even called match of the day. It was simply called Premier League highlights. Uh, and it was vastly reduced in its duration down to 20 minutes from the usual over an hour. So we are expecting that match of the day two tonight will follow a similar format. We've seen the disruption to the BBC schedules today. Radio 5 Live has had to, for a second day running now, had to fill holes in its schedule uh, with 
podcasting, uh, although it has uh, at some some moments returned to the usual uh, fare and, and has had commentary on a number of important Premier League matches and indeed the Six Nations as well. And we've seen disruption to the Women's Super League on BBC Two and right across the BBC, BBC Scotland services as well disrupted. So I think until there is a clear resolution, we have to assume that that's going to continue, that until there is concrete uh, agreement between Gary Lineker and the BBC that he will come back or, or whatever the resolution is, it may be that he will not come back. But I think that uh, we can assume from his statement or the statement from sources close to him tonight that that is not going to be the case. But until there is concrete resolution, we have to assume that disruption to the BBC's sporting schedules will continue as it has done for the last 48 hours.